Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today we're going to explore um, the idea of overcoming our reluctance to overcome the illusion of free will. Because uh, what happens is a lot of times we'll understand the logic, the reason why we don't have a free will, but, you know, we like to have a free will, and that's actually something we're preconditioned to do. It's not our choice. We're, we're hedonic creatures, and we've actually been programmed to, to cherish this idea of free will. But, um, all right, so before we get into this, I just want to like go briefly into the purpose of the show and then um, just briefly go into a definition of free will and its alternative, um, which is the reality of, of our you know, human will, which is causal will, or deterministic, predetermined will. Okay, um, the reason this show is important is that um, the illusion of free will causes a lot of unnecessary harm. You know, um, for example, when, when we have, let's say we have a two-year-old, you know, does something wrong, we don't ascribe free will to that two-year-old. And because of that, <coughs> excuse me, we will treat that two-year-old with compassion, with understanding, we'll say, you know, two-year-old couldn't help them themselves, you know. Um, but, you know, what happens is then when it comes to older children, adults, whatever, we say, well, you know, you did this of your own free will and, you know, you deserve to be punished. Um, you know, you're bad, you're evil, whatever. <clears throat> and you do, we do this to ourselves. <laughs> you know, we, we do something wrong. Oh, I did something wrong. I feel guilty. I'm going to suffer the guilt of, of having done something wrong. Okay, and um, so it causes a lot of um, unnecessary blame, guilt, aggression. Now, um, before I go further, I don't, I'm not going to say, you know, I wouldn't recommend that we, you know, do without kind of like a kind of a personal morality of, you know, just, um, in other words, like, just because we don't have a free will doesn't give us license to do whatever we want, and we'll go into that later. But, um, but anyway, that's, that's, I think, why the show is important. We could create a much better world by transcending this very, very pervasive illusion. illusion. It's an illusion that, that um, our whole civilization is based on. You know, our whole criminal justice system, our whole s system of rewards and punishments and um, socioeconomically, uh, personally. Okay, and um, so to briefly describe what people mean when they say free will, it's simply that, you know, that nothing is, nothing that I'm not in control of is um, is compelling me to to decide whatever I decide. That's that's the key. That you know, like that I'm in complete control of what I decide and what I don't decide. Um, and so that means, like for example, with the unconscious, the unconscious by definition is not in our control. You know, we're not even aware of it. So, you know, if 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 we have and if the unconscious is always awake which it is, it's always like the unconscious is what makes our heart beat and our lungs and our whole, you know, our whole body, you know, it, it just <laughs> runs the body. And, you know, naturally it takes, um, it's where we have all our memories stored. It's where even our, our thought processes, how we process information is stored. You know, the, the, these kinds of, um, and so like basically we can't make any decision without the unconscious. And so naturally if we have an unconscious that's not in our control, you know, you can see how that would um, make free will impossible. But that's the idea. You know, people say free will is like we can make a decision that is completely un in our control. Nothing that is not in our control is compelling it. And so, you know, we can see through various ways how that's not the case. Okay, so naturally we have a causal will. We have a will that um, that is subject to causality, that whatever decision we make has a cause, and then that the, that cause has a cause, and that cause has a cause. <laughs> you know, the causes go back in time, and there's this causal regression of cause and effect that leads to before we were born, before the planet was created, before the sun was created. You know, and you know, it's easy to see how like events in the past through this cause and effect um, process ultimately led to um, 
to what's this movie? You know, it's like we're like we're acting everything out, and it's it's you know that's another reason I'm I'm doing this show actually because like it's it's so mind-boggling that that nature. All right, in other words, we have been predetermined by nature, God, call it whatever you want, to have this illusion of free will. Okay, we that's you know we can't but do it, but it's just like so opposite to the way things are that even just for that reason alone. Uh, I think it would be um, beneficial for humanity to uh, to really understand, you know, our, our, our true nature, uh, nature of our will. Okay, now, um, all right, these shows are, gonna, are online, okay? If, if you go to causalconsciousness.com, you can see this show and uh, some previous episodes, okay? Or you can Google Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. If you put it in quotes, you'll probably um, find it easier. Um, all right, so the, with this thing, like we're going we're gonna to talk about overcoming our reluctance to overcome the illusion of free will. Here's the thing. Sometimes, all right, I want to start with, you know, this, it's, it's more than an illusion. Some people, for example, understand logically, rationally, that free will is impossible. They, ha they understand that we have this unconscious that makes free will impossible. They understand that we have this causality that makes things impossible. They understand that even if things were random, which random is really an incoherent kind of term, but if, if things happen without cause, that's not going to help the cause of free will, because if, if, if our decisions aren't caused, then they're certainly not caused by our free will. Okay, so you have a lot of people who understand this, but they still, um, they still are compelled by fate to, uh, to believe in free will. They can't let the, the notion go. Um, so you, naturally, you can't blame them, but that, but that's the reality. And so, but my, the point here is like when when a belief, you know, when when an illusion um, gets to the point of you know that it's an illusion, but you still believe in it, it's no longer an illusion. It becomes a delusion at that time. So so basically, our whole <laughs> our whole humanity, you know, except maybe a few people, whatever, is is completely deluded. Uh, regarding the very nature of our human will. And I want to like, for example, I want to just explain what, what I mean by delusion. Okay, so here's like, there's these two lines, okay? And, um, you know, if you were to ask yourself which line is longer, it seems like the one on top. Um, A is longer, okay? So, and that's the illusion. Um, now, if you measure the lines with a ruler, and um, you determine, oh my God, they're um, they're exactly the same distance. You know, I didn't haven't measured them, so I'm not exactly how long they are, but they are. You know, that's what delusion is. Um, now, so if after having measured those lines, you still continue to assert that the top line is longer than the bottom line that's where an illusion becomes a delusion, a delusion. <laughs> so, so it's really, I should title ex the show Exploring the, well, no, no, it's got to be the illusion of free will because a lot of people, the fact is most people just haven't even thought about this. You know, they, you know, um, there's this term free will and people just assume it, but, you know, people haven't explored it enough to really um, understand how, um, how it, you know, free will is impossible. That's, you know, what, that's the purpose of the show. All right, so... Um, now, why do, why do we continue to believe in free will? Okay, one of, the, um, one of the main reasons is like, people believe, well, gee, I mean, if I was like, if I was a robot, if I was an actor, um, life would have no meaning, you know? I mean, everything's a movie, we're just like, you know, nothing's up to us. We can't take credit for anything, you know? <laughs> and all right, that, that's understandable. Incidentally, that's, we're predetermined to feel that way. It's not our choice. <laughs> but um, I don't know. What's the answer to that? I think the answer is like generally in the world, um, we, we tend to be religious. We tend to believe in God or higher power. So if we don't want to see ourselves as robots, as puppets, as like these kind of like you know, completely programmed beings and, and everything is a movie. Another way to, to look at it is like, you know, God, God's f physicality is manifest through us. You know, we tend to believe that, um, that God, 
you know, exists outside of space and time, outside of the universe. He transcends time. But that, that, doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't make sense in a sense because, like, for example, one of the definitions of God is that he's omnipresent or everywhere. So I think a clearer understanding of God is that God is everything. And so we're a part of God. You know, we're like, but, so, so in, a, in a sense, we are instruments of God. I think that's probably a, um, a way of seeing this that mo pe most people can relate to because it, it has a, a religious context. You know, we're, we're, we're vehicles for God's will. And so, um, so when we see it from that perspective, you know, it's not that we're, you know, it just restores our nobility. You know, we're not just mere robots. We're not puppets. We are like the physical manifestation of God, okay? You know, God expresses him, herself through us. All right, that, that, that you know, should be a lot more palatable to, to people. It should, you know, should make um, understanding that we don't have a free will easier to accept. Okay, but then there's another... Um, kind of reason people will are kind of afraid to, to believe that we don't have a free will. They believe that, well, if we, if we acknowledge and accept and understand that we don't have a free will and act according to that, then, then there's, there's no personal morality. You know, in other words, you can't hold us accountable for anything. You can't, you can't, we can't take credit for the good we do and we can't blame ourselves or each other for, for the bad that we do. And naturally, I mean, it, it's, a, it's an understandable fear. People are afraid that, you know, um, my God, if, um, if everybody understands we don't have a free will, everybody's just going to do whatever they want, um, you know, and say, well, you can't blame me. I don't have a free will. But, and as a matter of fact, there's this guy, Saul Smilansky. He's a philosopher. He actually wrote a book which I've got to remember the, the title of it, but basically he understands that free will is impossible. It's an illusion. It's just like, you know, it doesn't exist. But he does, his perspective is that we shouldn't tell people because, because of this fear that people have that, you know, if we know the true nature of our will, that we're actually instruments of God rather than, you know, God's ourself. Because then when you think about it, you know, if we have a free will, that means we are creating our thoughts. You know, we are the author of our thoughts. And, you know, a, a good understanding of God is like God is the only thing, you know, entity that creates things. But, um, but the idea is like people believe, yeah, if, if we, you know, if we um, relinquish our belief in free will, there will be anarchy. No! And I'll tell you why. Because... One of, you know, we're, we're programmed, okay? We're hardwired in certain ways to act in certain ways. One of the ways we're hardwired is we have a hedonic principle. Uh, Freud explained this as the pleasure principle. There's been other kinds of explanations that in, of it in biology and other sciences. The idea is that we human beings are hardwired, compelled to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And naturally, sometimes we'll undergo a certain amount of pain for, let's say, you know, to, to assuage our conscience, you know. And we'll, so there, it's, you know, there's a, it, it gets a little complicated. But anyway, the idea is that because we are hardwired, you know, our basic motivation in life is to seek pleasure and avoid pain, we're not going to let people just get away with, um, with claiming, well, I don't have a free will, so I can do with it. We're not going to allow ourselves. And, um, but, but here's the thing, when we, um, when we attribute free will to ourselves and each other, when we do things wrong, we accuse, you know, like we blame, oh, you know, that person's bad, he's evil, he's, you know, and, you know, we do this to ourselves, you know, we do this personally, we do this, you know, when, God, we, when we do this geopolitically, that it results in wars and stuff, so, um, so the idea is like when we can overcome this illusion and this, 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 um, this attribution, then we can at least be more understanding. We can say, all right, well, this person did something wrong and we can't allow the person to continue doing it because it's hurtful and, you know, it's hurtful to them, it's hurtful to other people, and we have to take steps to, to prevent it. But, you know, 
without the free will perspective, the steps we take are going to be far more compassionate, far more understanding. The person who's, who, who does the, the, the wrong thing is not going to feel like they're an evil person. When we do the wrong things, we're not going to feel like we're bad and stuff. Okay, so we'll, you know, it'll be a much kinder, more compassionate, and far more intelligent world, you know, by, by overcoming this. And, and believe me, it's not going to... Um, all right, granted, we, we, there is no personal morality, so like when things go wrong, what do we do? All right, here's the thing. In, in religion, we tend to, when, when things go right, you know, we're, we're, we're taught to be grateful because like, hey, it's God's will. You know, God, thank God. Thank God when things are right. But, you know, unfortunately, when things go wrong, it's our fault. So, so naturally, when things do go wrong, yeah, I mean, like, I got to do a show on this. Like, it's an open question, I guess, in my mind still, whether or not God has a free will. Um, part of me kind of hopes that he doesn't. She, God, he, she. But um, because, like, if God doesn't have a free will, then we can't blame God. And, like, the cool thing about, like, not believing in free will is that, like, you know, we can hold ourselves as innocent, as blameless, you know, which is nice. So, you know, to be able to hold God in that way is... Um, would be good. Now, something, something is responsible for pain, which is the only thing that's actually wrong with reality. And that's, you know, when we describe something as bad or evil, it's because it creates pain. You know, that's the only reason it is bad or evil. But so something is this, this responsible. I, I got to do a show on this because that, you know, it's a very intriguing question. Okay. And again, like, you know, people believe that if we believe, if we overcome our belief in free will, civilization and society is going to crumble. No, <laughs> again, because of this pleasure principle, we're not going to let that happen. And the other thing is, like, you know, it's going to take, take time, years probably, who knows, I don't know how long, for people to first understand that our wills are not free, they're causal, and then to accept it. And then it's going to take time to incorporate that into society. Um, instantly, we, we, do, we do incorporate it in certain ways. For example, in our criminal justice system now, if a person is considered to not have known what, what they were doing at the time of the crime, whatever, then that's like the insanity plea. That you can't hold, we, we understand that you can't hold someone responsible uh, for what they did and they didn't know, you know generally what they were doing. This can happen with certain kind of brain injuries, whatever. So we do have that concept, but naturally with, with free will as... Um, you know, exposes the illusion it is, our criminal just justice system would, um, over time, become much more compassionate. We might have to separate some of us who would otherwise go around murdering each other. And think about this. You know, a lot of times people, like, commit crimes against other people because they are blaming them for something. They're saying, well, th this person did something wrong, and it's about retribution. I'm going to get them back. But if people in general didn't believe that other people had free wills, then a lot of that crime would be avoided. So, you know, it wouldn't happen to begin with. Okay. Um, think about this. Our, our um, overcoming this illusion of free will would make life so much more wonderful. And, and I mean literally wonderful, full of wonder. Because, I mean, think about it. This is all a movie. What I'm saying right now has been predetermined from before the, the earth was created, before the sun was created. Everything that we do, it's, it's not just about our decisions. Everything that happens, everything that moves, every bird that flies, every rock that, that moves, every planet that moves, everything that's happened that happens is predetermined, okay, from the past. It's all a movie. And, I mean, to my mind, you know, it's, it's perplexing, it's, it's amazing, it's bewildering, but it, it, it's wonderful. It would kind of like, um, you know, I start out the show with this quote by John Searle, this American philosopher. I think he says, it would be a greater revolution in our thinking than Einstein, Copernicus, Newton, Darwin, and Galileo. And I think he's right in a certain uh, um, a certain extent because, like, you know, it would give us an entirely new mindset, okay? And why do we need a new mindset? Because our world, you know, I mean, we've made a lot of progress. About two, three hundred years ago, 
almost everybody in the world was poor, you know. Whereas today, you know, many of us just have so much more than we need. We, we, there, we've got a lot of blessings, you know. Our world does work very well in a lot of ways. But in a lot of ways, it doesn't work all that well. For example, with climate change, um, we've got this situation that's going to be with us for decades. And, you know, it's probably too late to really um, do all we could about it, you know, because, like, what happens is the climate change we're experiencing now was caused 20, 30 years ago. And, but uh, the idea is, like, yeah, we've got, we've got monumental challenges with climate change alone, let, um, set aside the global economy, set aside other problems we have. If we adopt the, um, the um, understanding that free will is an illusion, then we can approach climate change and all our major challenges in the world cooperating. You know, it's like what happens is with the free will perspective, they're doing something wrong, they're bad, we're opposed to them, that, which means that they're opposed to us. And when we have that kind of a mindset, it's hard to get things done. It's hard to get agreement because, like, for example, if you're one of the people who, who are doing something wrong, you know, to admit it, Will, will mean to, to admit that you're a criminal and you're bad and stuff. And we, we, we just don't tend to do that. But if, if everybody shared the understanding that, um, that we don't have a free will, that if, if people do something wrong, it's not, you know, they're compelled. They had no choice but to do that. Then we could still, you know, say, well, listen, you, you, you have to stop doing this. You've got to stop, you know, polluting the, uh, the earth. You've got to stop warming the climate. But... When people don't feel responsible for, for those kinds of, like, horrible, you know, actions, then, then they can take more responsibility in a sense, you know, um, quote-unquote responsibility. Um, another, another, I think, way this is important is, for example, 50, 60 years ago, um, our farm animals were, were, um, were treated so much more humanely, so much more compassionately. I mean, you know, the, the cows had um, pastures to graze on. The chickens were out in, f in the yards, you know. Today, you wouldn't believe it. Um, if you Google, if you go to Google Video and Google, um, in quotes, Meet Your Meat. It's a 12-minute it's a video narrated by Alec Baldwin, produced by PETA. It just shows you how horribly we treat animals. Uh, chickens stuffed to, in cages their entire lives. They can't even move their wings. Um, Pigs who are more intelligent than dogs being um, skinned alive, being boiled alive. I mean, and so the idea is this stuff is so horrible that, um, you know, we, you know, we should probably stop eating meat because, we, you know, we'd live longer and be healthier if we did. But um, I think one of the reasons we, we continue to, um, to torture these animals is because, like, um, we don't look at the problem. We, you know... If we looked at the problem, we'd have to admit, oh, my God, we're, we're acting horribly. We're horrible people. You know, that's the only conclusion you could, you could um, reach. But if, if we have the understanding, if we take a look at that same situation from the understanding that what we're doing, what we have done, is completely compelled, it hasn't been up to us, fine, we could blame the universe or whatever is compelling us, but at least that would um, render us guiltless, you know, innocent, and from that perspective, okay, when, when, when we're no longer holding ourselves responsible for such cruelty, then maybe through compassion, you know, we, we could um, stop torturing those animals. You know, because I have a feeling that it's responsibility, it's fear of responsibility that often um, just kind of like prevents us from looking at what we do. And naturally, the, the great irony in this is that um, the, the universe has caused us to... to, to um, you know, torture these animals, and God willing, the universe will hopefully soon um, get us to, you know, acknowledge we don't have a free will to be compassionate and, and to, um, you know, treat them better. Okay, um, so yeah, to the, to the extent that we overcome this illusion of free will, we would be creating a brand new world. It'd be like a new renaissance, um, you know, tenfold. Uh, first, it would be so cool. I mean, imagine like <laughs> on a personal level. Right now, when, when things go wrong, you did wrong. I didn't do wrong. You did wrong. No, you did wrong. <laughs> and we're like at each other. Whereas like 
this might take a little time, mind you, but like when, when we get to understand that, that we don't have free wills, really understand it, not just, you know, accept it, then like you have two people and one person does something wrong and they sit down rationally. Well, wait a minute, you know, why did the universe compel you to do um, something wrong? And, and then the other person might say, well, you know, the universe is actually, you know, getting me to think that it wasn't wrong. You know, and, you know, basically the conversation would be in the spirit of cooperation, trying to figure out whether it was wrong or not and, you know, what to do about it instead of the back and forth blaming that happens, you know, as a result of free will. Okay, um, another thing we would do by understanding that free will is an illusion, we, we would understand so clearly that the way we treat our kids in school and when they're young makes all the difference to our future you know it's like in computers there's like you know garbage in garbage out good stuff in good stuff out it's the same with us it's the same with our kids if we if we um understand that that basically what we're doing with education with with child rearing is we're actually programming our kids to behave in certain ways and and, and they're absolutely going to behave in those ways you know because that's that's all they can do then we can take um, more time, we can, we can devote more effort to really um, teaching them how to be happy, how to be good, you know. Um, okay, there are a lot of other reasons um, why overcoming this illusion of free will would really like create a much more wonderful world in the sense of good and understanding and intelligent, and we'll get into them in other shows. But, um, Okay, so I guess, that, I guess that's all we have time for today. So in the, in the future, again, we're going to explore this, um, you know, because even when you, when you understand it, it, it's hard to accept. So we're going to go into this a lot and over time understand why, you know, overcoming and transcending this illusion of free will will create a much better world. Okay, take care.